Hi everyone, uh, it's Saturday and um, I sort of started to make a start on the truck today but I'm just waiting for somebody, I've got a I've got a, a tradesman coming over today to um, install something so I just gotta sort of wait until he gets here and then scoots off and then I can get stuck into the truck but I thought I'd just clean up the console and um, and take a good look at it um, with the CD player installed so I thought I'd just let you guys have a look it's come up pretty bloody good I'm happy with it and um, I haven't armor all that ashtray yet but I gave it a really really good scrub um, and I think it was just, just excessive dirt on it because it's come up it's come up pretty good anyway there you, there you go so it's looking down it all looks pretty clean so the CD players in there it will normally have gone in the top there but I as you know I had to do some a uh, bit of changing around to get past the um, the heater box so that all goes in really nice still got lots of room behind here so that's that's all worked out really really nice that's that that piece I put in the other day um, so that's worked out good um, so the ashtray all opens up the way it should and the cup holder comes out and there's enough clearance between the face of the uh, CD player and the, the cup holder. I think the CD player can go back maybe another one or two mil, but I didn't want to push it into um, its metal housing and, and lock it in because I don't know where the the, the tools are to sort of um, get the CD player out. So, um, yeah, I've just left it at that. But yeah, I've you know, I've gone around it with a with a toothbrush and I've cleaned it all up in in here and all around the the edges and just just gone over the whole thing. So it looks it looks clean. It's going to look all right when it goes in. Um, there's a few little marks here, uh, but the seat sits there, so you won't actually see them. Uh, I'm not really worried about that. But yeah, that ashtray's come up really good. All that white stuff I'm just brushing off now is just the lint from the uh, the cloth that I used. Um, my fingers are still a little bit wet. That's what I'm putting on there. I'm putting actually water onto it. So, yeah, happy guys. Um, it's one more little job. I already pointed that mark out to you when I removed it from that other car. But, um, again, the seats sit there so you don't see it. Cheers. I just discovered something else, guys, which is... An absolute bonus. Now, with the um, electric window regulators that I bought, they actually supplied three switches. And I, at first, I sort of it didn't sort of register why. And simple reason is that you have there's the three switches there. You have one on the passenger side door, and then you have <coughs> two on the driver's door. So one is actually to control the driver's door and the other one is to control the passenger door from the driver's side. So, although I don't need those mounts, I've ended up with three switches. So I've got, and because it's going to be a center, center mount, um, you know, I'm going to have my left, my left window, my back window and my driver's window all mounted in there. And it will, it will mount nice. I think I have to make a little plate for it though. Nice little plate. So I'll, I'll cut down, I'll cut down into the bottom of that to drop the switches level with this recess. But I'll need to put a plate of some sort um, just over the top. And that'll be another job for Mike. I'll probably make it out of stainless steel. And what we'll do is we'll put some... Um, We'll put some little little tubes on each corner that are threaded inside and then that will go down inside and then there'll be a backing plate from underneath um, that will hold that plate to the console. So I think it's going to work out nice. You know, that's, that's a really, really nice fit there for three switches. And they can, well, they can all be moved in a bit tighter, but I've just 
I've done that simply to try and balance them for the video. So, but I think you guys get what I'm, I'm trying to do there. So yeah, another bonus. As I was going through the um, the bag of bits and pieces, um, I did find the backing plate for the larger switch housing. So that will actually become the plate that will go underneath. So that sort of just goes to show you that um, that it will go in there nicely and it will cover up it will cover up the hole. It's all going to work out very nice, guys. Okay, guys. Um, decided that I was going to do that um, H4 headlight conversion. So that's those um, rectangular headlights that I bought from the racking yard. I've just cut the top off that. So there's all the bits and pieces there guys. I've done the other one a little bit earlier. So all I need to do now is according to um, the other YouTube videos is you're supposed to rough this up inside here like this. Basically until you almost see the brass or metal. Um, I'm pretty sure that the one I've just cut off is pretty sure it's brass or it's got a brass coating on it or something because yeah, it, it just looked different to this one. As I mentioned in a previous video, uh, one of the one of the um, lights was a replacement. It wasn't an original, so you know who knows what they used. Um, in a non non genuine headlight, you know, It'd be really cheap and nasty. <laughs> so I don't have the um, the thirty six reflectors out here at the moment. I just I didn't want to bring too much out at once and. I wasn't sure how much I was going to get done today. So. Pretty sure that this is looking alright now. One of the things you can sort of sand it. And it looks like it's done until you wipe the dust off it. And you still see reflective bits. So um, I'm pretty sure that this, as this one sits at the moment, would be would be fine. So you can see, no reflective bit left in there now. So I'm pretty sure that should solder on. Okay. And I have to admit, I sort of cheated when I showed you that I just took off that. I actually took it off before. And then remembered, oh, I forgot to film it. <laughs> so I've already partly scuffed it up. Um, but as you can see, that's sort of, I don't know if it's brass, but it's its more yellow. It's, you know, the thing is, it's metal. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as it's clean, it should solder on. Um, it shouldn't be an issue with it. It doesn't necessarily need to be brass, I don't think. Once it's all been tinned or fluxed or whatever you want to call it, it should it should go on all right. Um, I think I pointed out in the um, in the uh, one of the earlier videos when I first got these that the, um, the parking light globes were in different positions, obviously because one was an aftermarket, one was an aftermarket and one was an original one. There you go guys, go over there, a bit of a wipeout. And um, 
what I've decided to do is I'm going to get a little bit a little bit creative here. I'm going to do sort of what they do on the um, some of the aftermarket headlights you can buy. I'm not only going to have my parking lights in the headlight, I'm going to have my indicators in there too. So the 36 reflector already has the provision in it for for a parking globe, or parking light globe, and um, what I'm going to do with these ones is I'm going to use them as the indicators. So once this gets soldered onto the top of the 36 reflector, I'll have that as my guide hole and I just drill straight through the 36 reflector and I'll have a globe top which will be my indicator and a globe bottom which will be my parking globe so I'm going to try and conceal everything in the headlight they're big enough headlights I don't think there should be an issue there um, so yeah I'll see how that goes um, but yeah I think I think they've come up all right. I think maybe the one in my right hand could still give that a little bit more of a scuff, but yeah, 100% that they'll take. Um, you know, you've only got to get, <laughs> to be quite honest, you only really need to get one good seal around the whole light. It may not cover 100% of the reflector, but as long as you've as long as you've got at least doesn't matter sort of where you go, as long as you've got one one spot around it that seals, um, it'll hold it to the it'll hold it to the reflector, so it's all good. Um, oh, and these these were different too. The, these do take different globes. This one was a push-in socket, which has a what do they call it? Like a um, I can get it out. <laughs> it's burnt out as well. Oh, jeez! Come on. There we go. So you laid a style of globe. And your other one is just a one of your older style. You, you twist in, twist inside. So it's just your normal type of globe. So I can get away with that. No one's going to see it because all you see is the globe from the front. And the globes are the same size. They're just differently. Um, they just lock in differently. That's all. So I'm happy with these guys. Um, I'll pick up the video when I do the 36 reflectors and um, yeah we'll go through that together the scary bit <laughs> cheers okay that's the 36 reflectors as you can see how tiny that, that, that hole is so we've got to cut the top off that and that was for the parking light I do have the original sockets here those were for 6 volt and pretty cactus so I will replace those so um, we've got the globe in the top there which will now act as an indicator so once we cut it once we cut it out at top that's supposedly how they're supposed to sit um, now you know, I'm only going by the videos that I've seen on YouTube, so um, I'm hoping that <laughs> I'm hoping that this works. Otherwise, I've stuffed a good set of 36 Studebaker headlight reflectors. But looking at it there, the radius or the the curve, the curvature of the um, reflectors on both set of lights. Um, you know, 50 years difference. 
um, they seem to be seem to be spot on. So um, yeah, I got to give these a go, a go guys, and um, I'll show you what I end up with. Here we go guys, got the tops off those. These aren't necessarily um, finished yet. I have to um, give them a little bit of a, a file. Get them looking good. That's, uh, that's what they suggest you do. <laughs> and then You have your H4 conversion, so pretty happy about that. It's all uh, worked out pretty good. So nice little fine rat tail. Don't want to go too hard on this. It's very, um, it's very delicate. I do have a, another file, it's a flat file with a, like a, um, radius back on it, but it's, I think it's a little bit too coarse, I think it would rip too much out of this. So, yeah, it's just, um, Slow and easy as she goes. Doesn't take much to um, to take uh, the brass off at all. So as long as I get it looking round from the front, when we look in there, and there doesn't seem to be any deviations, um, that's pretty much it. Because the hole doesn't need to be opened up. Because the globe global slip in there now, no problem. So, yeah, just a little bit at a time. What I, I show you what I really like to use, and who knows I might <laughs> I might give it a go if I stuff it, you're gonna see it live. So that's not too bad guys. Sounds like I'm going at it hard, but I'm not. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. It's just noisy. It's just noisy, that's all. Um,
taking off um, just taking off the lip there. Just get it nice and smooth. And I have to do what I did on the inside of these reflectors, I have to do on the outside of these reflectors, so these 36 Studebaker reflectors. Um, I'll try a different approach this time. I'll try by just filing across the top here, which will give us a level. And that's taken off all the stuff, so I just go around in there, deburr it. It's looking pretty good, guys. Um, a couple little sections there that need a little bit of TLC, but it's not bad. You know, I'd rather um, you'll you'll never ever see. You'll never ever see the hole, um, even looking through the um, the glass of the headlights. So, you know, because it'll be taken up, it'll be taken up by the the globe itself. So, but obviously it goes into this. So, so what we should actually do. So we should trial this. We should trial this. Um, find which way this goes. There we go. Okay, globes in. So that's what we got. Now. Now it does it does sit back. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera. There is a gap. There is a gap around the actual um, base of the globe to the reflector. But I'm guessing that that's that's how it's meant to be. Um, because there's no other way to do it. It's gonna sit where it sits in the housing. And you know, there's nothing protruding past there, so it sits. It is sitting nice. It is sitting nice on um, on the reflector. It's sitting beautiful on the reflector. So I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I'll just lift the camera up. See if that makes any difference, guys. I can sort of see. Sort of see the gap all around it, but but that's the, that's the way it sits, you know. There's it like there's a little tab there which stops the globe from going any further. So you know that's that's got to be it. That's got to be it. So I'm happy with that. Um, it's all good. Thanks guys. Okay guys, I got these um I got these mounted. All correct. They usually say that the um the flat surface of the uh, halogen globe always goes to the bottom. So that's what I've done. And uh on the back there I've had to cut a little piece out just to put the parking globe in so I've got clearance around that 
this one it's a little little worse because the um, the, the parking globe that was in that after, I think it was no the original um, rectangular headlight was in a different position it was sort of offset to the side so unfortunately I had to bite into that a little bit but it's really not going to make any difference it's not going to be seen so there we go got a H4 H4 conversion I haven't drilled the holes yet for the indicators but I'm working on that I'm thinking about actually um, getting some new plugs now rather than using these these older ones um, I'll get something that's matched and if I have a look in my my little stash of uh, electrical stuff I probably actually got a matching pair so um, yeah I just need time to go through it 